Okay, so now we're going to talk about bytes because that's the thing I think a lot of people don't understand. So fish will interact with your bait in a lot of different ways. And it's important to know what the fish are doing so that you can get the hook in the fish. Because I think a lot of guys set the hook too soon or they do this and they, they miss fish because I hear, hear it all the time. But the reality is if they, if they want this bait and they eat this bait, it's lights out. I mean, especially this one. They eat this thing, it's lights out. So knowing when they actually ate the bait is crucial. I'm going to tell you the number one best bite that you can get and it's probably the easiest one to identify it's the tick okay so when a fish comes up to this bait let's say you're throwing a bait out there and you feel a little pink you definitely feel it with the fluorocarbon you definitely a lot of times feel it with the braid as long as there's not slack in your line so what that is okay is that fish came up to your bait and they created a vacuum and it sucks your bait in so what happens is it makes your line jump but when they suck it in, they, they pull that bait six or eight or 10 inches into their mouth. It makes your line jump. And you can actually see your line go boink and your tip goes boink. Oh, that's it. Wham. You know, you just know that's the bite you're after. So when you feel that tick boink, that's the one you want. All right. So this is the tick bite. And I'm going to zoom in on this and try to slow it down because the reaction time from when I get that bite to when I set the hook is like less than a second probably. I mean, instantly I react because... That bait is all the way in their mouth when you get that bite. Doink! Because they created that vacuum, makes your line jump, makes your tip go boink, and that bait's already in their mouth. So you don't want them to swallow it, you don't want them to spit it, I just hit them instantly. So with practice you'll learn, you know, what the bites feel like and if that's the right bite or not. But that's the one you're after right there. The number two easiest bite that you can get with a soft bait, okay? is and this is another one where you want to use the fluorocarbon of the braid you feel your bait boom boom you feel your bait bumping into stuff you feel your bait you know you can feel the resistance in the water and all of a sudden there is none there is no resistance anymore what what happened uh that's a fish so when you feel like your bait you just cease to feel your bait anymore that's a fish what they did is they came up behind it and they swam into you and so what that means is grind 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 till you feel pressure and then boom hit them all right, so this one's pretty self-explanatory here. I make a long bomb cast. Now I'm using braid here because that's a long cast, 50, 60 yards sometimes. You know, I got the wind in my back. I'm making really long casts. So this fish picks up my bait and this is the bite I'm talking about. It just, I don't feel the bait anymore. So I start grinding and I step back to take extra slack out of the line to set the hook. So even at, you know, 50 yards or whatever this fish bit at, I can still keep pressure on that fish with a five to one reel with braid. I think a lot of guys maybe have issues because they're using mono, can't get the hook in the fish, can't keep pressure on the fish because of the stretch, but with braid, no problem whatsoever. So that, that's another one. If you get those two bites, that tick, boink, and if you get that where you just don't feel your bait anymore, those are the two easiest guaranteed i mean when you get those two bites it's lights out it's like almost a guarantee that you're going to catch a fish when you get those two bites the next one is kind of the fumble i would say the fumble is the next one and what that is is where you feel it doesn't feel like a tick it feels more like something's kind of messing with your bait and you can tell that with the fluorocarbon and the braid you can't tell it with the mono a lot of times and so that's why I like that, those lines. You can feel these different things. So with the fumble, it's like, you just feel like, it's hard to describe, but it's, it doesn't feel like a tick. It feels like something bumped your bait, but not in a way that you created. You know, like you can tell when your bait's bumping this stuff because you're bump, 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 bump. But see, like I wasn't turning the handle there and something bumped it. That, that's how you know something's up. And so when you feel that, just keep your retrieve going and eventually you're waiting for that tick or you're just waiting for your rod to load up. All right, so this is the fumble bite here. I can feel that something's messing with my bait, but it's not a tick, my line doesn't go slack, the rod doesn't load up, so I know something's not, it's not quite right. So I just keep on with my retrieve. Oh, there is the bite, something just bumped it. There it is. Uh, usually this is a smaller fish, to be honest with you. I think they're trying to reorient the bait so they can get it in their mouth. That's why they're fumbling around with it. That's not too bad. 
Anyways, he had bumped it, let it sit there a second because I could tell he didn't eat it, and then he bumped it again and my line went slack and I reeled into it and set. I probably wouldn't have caught this fish had I swung on the first contact, but you know, it's not that big a deal. If you miss one of these fish, usually it's not a big one. Sometimes you see, you get your bait back and the tail's wrapped around in front of the hook and you're like, oh, I've dumped a giant. Usually that's a small fish too. The one thing that is most important, okay, is I don't wait to set the hook. When I feel that tick, when I feel my line go slack, when I feel that the rod loaded up, I just grind it. I hit them as quick as I can because you don't want them to swallow the bait. You don't want them to spit the bait. You don't want anything like that. You just got to know when those bites are right so you can just hit them. You know, so that's the other one, the fumble. That's what we're going to call that one. And then the other bite that you get, I'm trying to think of all these different bites because they're, they're, they're funny. It's, there's different ones that you get. Um, oh, what is that? Uh, let's see. There was one that I was thinking of. Oh, so this particular bite doesn't happen with, it, what's weird is certain baits will have different kinds of bites. It's really, it's really bizarre. So one that I don't feel with the burrito shad very often, but I do feel with the baca. It, it happens with this bait, but it's much more likely. It's, what's funny is it happens like almost every time with the baca, but it rarely happens with this bait. And that's just where the fish just loads up on it. You'll be out there, boom, 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 and it just, your rod just gets heavy and there's a fish on there. That happens rarely with this bait, for me anyway, all the time with the baca. It's always like, oh, the rod just loads up and there's a fish on there. So this one's pretty easy. You know, when you feel the rod load up and it starts pulling, you pull back. So here I'm actually throwing the baca because I can bomb it way out there and I have to hit this patch of grass that's out there that nobody else fishes because nobody else is casting that far. So anyway, I bomb the bait out there, hop it out of that small patch of grass, and then the rod gets heavy. Is it more grass? Nope, it's a fish. So I just set into them. And, you know, the thing is with mono, is that a log? Is that whatever? No, I can tell it's a fish. So that's why I set. You know, when it's grass, I snap it out. When it's a fish, I set the hook. When it's a piece of wood, I don't do anything. I just kind of continue with my retrieve, hoping I don't get hung. Hmm? That's another bite to look out for. So we got the tick. We've got the line goes slack. We've got the fumble. And then we've got the rod just loads up. Those are the four main bites that you're going to experience, I think. Another bite that probably most guys aren't going to experience. I do. A lot of times I'll fish these, flip these baits in the grass and there you're not really feeling it. You're just watching your line. So that's another one. If you're, if you're up shallow and you're pitching these baits and flipping them in grass and stuff like that, it's, it's a line watching deal. You just throw it, just flip it in there and just watch for your line to go bonk. So this is a fun little bite I have. It's not all year long. It's kind of a specific situational thing, but behind me, there's a reservoir in front of me. There's this kind of landlocked little body of water they call the bird sanctuary and they blocked it off so you can't put boats and stuff in there well during the summer months when the water gets low if we get enough rain the water level raises just enough that water will go under this bridge the and shad, shad will shoot through there to get from the reservoir to the bird sanctuary and bass will be waiting in this grass so all you gotta do is just walk up flip your bait in there and watch your line when your line takes off boom there's a fish yeah sure so differentiating between those is kind of important because you do want to have an option, you know, if you need to follow up with a different bait or something, you don't swing when you're not ready. But what you're also going to find is things that aren't actually legitimately bites. This is one that's like a territorial thing. It's like a, like a boom, they smack it. Like I've had, and it doesn't feel like a tick and, and they didn't eat it. They just hit the crap out of it. I had, I've had that happen many times. And it doesn't, you just don't swing on that one. I know that one's a hard one because it, it feels like a bite, but a lot of times they just smack the crap out of it for no reason. I don't know why. Another one is a spongy. So you throw it out there and you feel it and it just kind of gets heavy and it feels kind of spongy. Absolutely do not set the hook on it because you're going to rip the tail off your bait. doesn't matter what bait it is, what it's made out of. It doesn't matter. If you feel, it feels spongy, never set the hook because you're going to rip the tail off. That's what it is. It's just, you'll feel it too. It feels spongy. And so don't set the hook on that one. If you feel a hard smack, I would keep reeling just to make sure. And if it loads up, then you're good. But most of the time that hard, really hard smack like that, it feel, it, they just, it does, it's not a bite. They're just being aggressive with it. And then a lot of times you'll feel that fumble 
but it never turns into anything. That's another one. You'll feel the fumble, you feel the fumble, and then it's like it didn't, they didn't eat it. So that's another one don't swing on. Just continue your retrieve, pick up your follow-up bait, throw it out in the exact same spot. Different size, different profile, different color. And that's, that's usually, I mean, sometimes that's the deal, man. Like having two rods, they fumble with this one, boom, there's another one. They fumble with this one, boom. And like, that's the pattern, you know, it's like <laughs> whatever it is. And sometimes you go around, well, I'll just start with this. You go around with this and they don't mess with it, but you throw this one and then you throw this and then it's like, boom, that's the pattern. I, sometimes that's how it works. So, um, so those are, those are the bites. <laughs>